Yes, I'm going to share my screen. Um, hi, everyone. Today's agenda, the first thing is, OK, so um, so I've done some interactive interactive testing with uh, uh, with some unsupported extensions. I've tried adding those extensions and to see how our Git tool chooser is behaving uh, when those extensions are added. And, um, Fran specifically asked for uh, for uh, for those results. We were having a discussion in the PR. So I think we can run a build and see it in real time if that's so uh, in this project, uh, I have a very small repository. It's under uh, five MB. So, so I go to the configuration page. Hmm. So this Jenkins instance uh, contains both Git and JGit in its environment. I've specifically chosen JGit as the preferred tool. And uh, so right now I have a I have an additional behavior here. I'm going to uh, delete it and then I'm going to run this uh, project, build this project. So what should happen is it should um, it should pref it it should prefer JGit and uh, the recommended tool should be JGit by the Git tool chooser uh, since the repository size is less than 5 MB, which is the expected behavior. Now, as we go to the project again and we configure the project and we uh, will add one or two extensions, additional behavior, which are not supported by JGit. So now after adding those extensions, um, theoretically, the, the Git tool choo uh, chooser should not recommend JGit. It should recommend Git. That is what it should do so uh, so so timeout is also a feature which is not supported by jagged so let's just save this and uh, i have to delete to wipe out the workspace now um, why do you have to wipe out the workspace because i am um, I don't have to because I am. If I don't, then it is not going to check out the, uh, not going to go through the one of the functions I wanted to go through. So if ah. it's if it's available, then it doesn't. Uh, it applies a uh, different operation, right? Got it. So, okay. So yes, here the recommended tool is Git. So. So I tried this with right now I have shown it with timeout. I tried it with clone behavior where I uh, included shallow clone. There also I saw the same thing. So uh, I would assume that functionally uh, the unsupported command is working how it should. And the way we are taking that information, it's working how, uh, how I expected it to. Now I think with the, uh, with this current feature, unsupported command and uh, uh, the Git tool chooser, what remains is uh, testing in different scenarios. I would say, uh, uh, would you uh, recommend an exhaustive list of all the extensions which are not recommend, which are not supported by JGit, and then testing all of those extensions before and after cases? That is what we would want for each of the ex uh, extensions which are not supported in JGit, right? I have done it with two or three. Okay. It's, it certainly seems, given how many people are using the Git plugin, it seems safest to check. As, uh, cur certainly, if there's an option in the plugin, it's probably not only been used, but likely misused. And, and so I'm prone to say yes, but, okay. but I'm, I'm open to other, other discussion, or other, other saying, oh, no test 50% test, you know, test, test a random selection. Uh, the, the spot checks you did are great. I would love a broader check personally. Okay. Okay. Mark. So um... uh, Fran, Fran, your comments, your concern, because it's, you're, you're asking a very valid trade-off question. We're trading time to do interactive tests for other things. Right, and it's it's a valid a valid trade off question. Uh, 
Okay, no, so but... yes, sir. Sorry. No, no, no. I, I, I was allowed to say that no because uh, uh, most of my questions were all about uh, the question that with your test have been answered. So now I have a clear uh, uh, understanding of your PRs. So now what I want is to review again the PRs and, and be sure that now I have all the information and, uh, and I'm in a better position to, to review it, all of them. Okay. Okay. So um, the second thing is uh, a change in design. So uh, now what was happening before the change? So for Git tool chooser, we had two constructors. The first one uh, used Git S a Git SEM source object to uh, get the cache. And it relied on the source Git SEM source object to get the cache. And the second construct and and this constructor, we uh, so what we did was first we looked for cache if we could find it and we estimated the size and recommended the tool. If we could not, then we looked for extensions and then we asked uh, for the for the size from them. And if we could find that, then we could recommend the tool. Now um, the second constructor I gave was an option if we just have the remote name and nothing else. Uh, so that it can be used uh, across uh, other projects apart from multi-branch uh, project. So now um, Mark uh, suggested that we would, we should not need the Git SEM source object to get the cache entry. And um, I, I did find that, that we would only need the remote name to access uh, any .git directory uh, cached within the Jenkins instance workspace. So now the uh, we don't need two constructors. We just need one constructor, uh, which would require the remote name, and uh, then it would make the decisions. So it has two ways to find the size. The first one would be the best way we have is to determine it using cache, and if we don't have that, then we use the API, uh, REST API method. So and I've so I ran the unit tests again on this to make sure that um, the code is working with just the remote name. It doesn't require the source object and it is working well. It's uh, all the cases have passed. So I don't think we would need much. Uh, I would, I haven't pushed this code on the PR yet. I just wanted to show you first. So I think this is it with the design modification. I, I think we would need more design modification. I'm coming to the third point now. So that is related to the support of other extensions. So I've been uh, looking at, uh, so the first question I have with the support of other extension plugins is, do we first in, uh, in our first uh, go, do we want to uh, only support public repositories and size related to public repositories or would we want to, okay. So we want both of them. So uh, for that, uh, I, I asked in Gitter about user authentication and uh, uh, Mark suggested that it would be best that we allow get the brand source plugins to decide uh, what kind of credentials it should use to authenticate the user and then use uh, the API to get uh, the size of a private repository if, if it wants to. So uh, with that approach, I, I, I was looking at the brand source implementation. I have some concerns. The first concern is that, so the way uh, the brand source plugin is going to uh, pass the credentials or get the cred credentials is, is is same as I, I found in the Git plugin. It's using the lookups uh, scan credentials uh, functionality. And uh, so it needs three things. The first is the context that I assume is the job which is running. The second is the API URI, which is what we're providing. The second is the credentials ID. So as far as I understand, uh, the two things, these two things is something we have to provide to those uh, plugins. This is not something we can take from them uh, because what I've, so our, uh, our S, yes, yes. Fine. One, one question about the credentials. Uh, why is Git client who has to provide that credential to the other plugin? I don't know exactly what is the, the how, how other plugins are using Git plugin in, in for this very case. A concrete case, okay? That's what I'm, I am asking. Uh, because my understanding is that, ah, no, okay, no, 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 no. 
Okay, no, no. I got it. I got it. Nothing, nothing. Sorry, sorry for the noise. So, no. no, actually, I, I, I tried that. I, I try. Uh, so my first implementation approach was to use the, the context they have or to use the credentials ID because I thought that they, if the source plugin is installed in my instance, I can use the the context and the credentials ID uh, this uh, project would have, but that would be that would not work. But still, I. So I wanted to do that, but then I figured out that I found that the extension is implemented as a, st a static class and all of these, um, whatever objects we're trying to access are non-static. So first of all, I could not figure out a way to get them in that. I don't understand. Is that, is that possible? Because if the, if these are static classes, that, that means that they're, they're going to be shared across, across all the objects, which is not which doesn't make sense with the credentials ID because that would be linked to a particular object. So that's what I understood from it. So I thought that it would be best for us that the Git plugin, while it's asking for a particular size for a particular repository should also tell what project it is. Uh, I, I have a very limited understanding of the uh, class called item. That is what it is accepting uh, item item is the context it, it wants and then uh, the credentials id is something we can provide and then we can then it's it's the the job is uh, i think is easy but now uh, the question i have with this approach is uh, related to the item the job so right now when i did not pass any credentials i my uh, the git plugin was you was was using um, so i was using a freestyle project and I, and I used the API extension of branch source without use it, using it anywhere. That, so my, my question is, if I want to pass it credentials, which means that I'm passing it a context, does the plugin, which is the branch source plugin, needs to be, uh, needs to be used in a project? Is it necessary for it to be used in a multi-branch project? And if it's not being used, it's just there. It's in, inside the Jenkins instance and has never been used. Would it still be able to accept the context I have and uh, use it to scan the credentials and um, connect with GitHub? It's, or am I, 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 I think it's an excellent question. I don't know the answer, but I, I may have a specific example of a case that will will likely fail and and need some more thought so so if okay. imagine a freestyle job that is a credential a, a job with a credential that uses an ssh private key as its credential okay all right so that's the credential id we have and now we ask the scm repository scanner from the branch source plugin to scan with that credential id it can't because REST APIs are not secured by private keys. They're secured by uh, username, password, or by tokens. Okay. And so, so I think, I think your, your question is a crucial one, and I don't know the answer to the question. I'm hopeful that the branch source plugins will see the dubious credential ID, ignore it, or or bias towards choose a credential that they already have associated with the, a particular repository, but I don't know that for sure. Okay, and that is something I, because they, they do validate the API U, URI we provide. So I haven't looked at how they're validating it. Uh, maybe they are doing what you are suggesting here. But I guess this is the problem we're trying to solve the to, to allow this for freestyle jobs is that well it's to allow it for anything because we we want the tool chooser to not to not require that you must be a multi-branch pipeline right mm -hmm. the tool chooser needs to benefit everybody we, we would like it to benefit everyone and and therefore if if it can ask the question viably for the branch source great Ask, ask the question to get the answer. So what I can see from how they're validating their API URL, they are checking if the credentials is an instance of standard username password credentials. If it's not, they are throwing an IO exception saying unsupported credential type. 
Okay. So that you've already answered the, the first, first observation I had. If we inadvertently pass a private key credential to this, check API URL validity will fail. Hmm. And that means that we will not be uh, okay. But, but that, that's, it's, it's perfectly, they, they may not have anywhere in their system and a, a token for the branch source, right? They may have just installed the branch source and have no, no username password assigned to it. So, so failing is a valid, valid behavior. Hmm. So then how I guess do the other thing is, how would you, how would you associate, I guess, are you doing a, a lookup on the, on the URL to determine that it's GitHub? Because the branch source plugin, I think it knows that it's GitHub because you're, you're, you've configured that as part of your multi-branch project. So in a freestyle context, like how would you know that you would talk to the GitHub branch source plugin versus the GitLab branch source plugin? I thought he just asked every, I thought you were just asking every provider, do you have one? Can you answer me this? Did I misunderstand, yes. Rishabh? Yes, yes, that is what. So we've, okay. uh, we've exposed a method, which is, this, is the URL applicable to your plugin or not? So if they, um, so then in that process, they can uh, validate it using the uh, uh, API your validity, this method okay. or whatever, however they would choose to. So um, then my question is, so for, for example, what I, so what I experienced while I was uh, sending uh, unauthenticated uh, request was that I was in a freestyle job. I was able to get the size of the repository without having a cache. Uh, and uh, I did not have a multi-branch project uh, within the uh, Jenkins instance. It was just the only project. So with authenticated request, we would need to figure out a way that um, the credentials are either the username password or their a token. That is, that is, those are the two types of credentials which would be supported by a REST API. Uh, so, so then, so if the freestyle job, but is configured by the user as, um, with the private SSH key, then we, we cannot do anything about it. Right. I, right. I, I don't think so. Well, no, maybe that's too strong because it's, there are some of the branch source plugins that have, have various mappings that attempt to, oh, you asked to use this SSH key and I have a, uh, a username password pair that I can use whenever you mention that. So, so there's at least one branch source that says, Hey, I can do a checkout with private key, but still use this username password pair for, for token based access for, for rest API calls. So I'm not sure that you should optimize away the call to the branch source. We should ask them and let them say no. Okay. Okay. So, so then, um, so then when we are sending the repository URL for which we need the size, we, but we would send the context and the credentials ID. Right? That is something we have to send. I, I, I think you're right. I, I wish it were different, but I think you're absolutely right. The thing that knows that uh, I had the flawed idea earlier, and it was obviously completely flawed that G, the, the branch source should just know the credential it will use, but really it can't, right? Because it has to know, has to know the URL and has to associate the, the credential with the URL. So I think you're right. I think we're going to have to pass it. Uh, or maybe I, I haven't explored the branch source plugin in any of the branch source plugin where it cannot, it, uh, contain a map could not it create a mapping between the repository URLs, uh, URLs and the credentials it has stored it would right it would create a mapping so if if I am um, if I'm sending a repository URL it would be able to check if it contains the credentials. yeah it's it's certainly worth exploring right it is absolutely worth exploring to see do we really have to pass a credential but I suspect you're going to find oh yes we have to pass a credential Okay. Yeah, and I guess I'm kind of wondering, like, because 
you wouldn't want to accidentally pick up the wrong credential either because that could like lead to credential leaks right right uh, the, that, that's a novel one right oh i i asked to scan the super secret everybody's passwords repository and i just borrowed the credential scanning the credentials from from the jenkins system yeah i wonder if you need like if it ends up not being a uh if it ends up not being a token or username password, like I wonder if like for a freestyle job, if you'll end up needing to provide an option for the user to select their REST API credential or something like that. I don't know. Anyways, I'll look at the PRs. Sorry. I'm behind too. So I'm, I think I'm slowing us down. <laughs> That's okay. That's, so I, yeah. uh, so what you're suggesting is that if we, if we know that the credentials the user has, Past would not be uh, able to use for the REST APIs. We would ask the user if they can provide. Uh, yeah, for me, that's that's a very exotic case. I wouldn't worry about yeah. it, Rishab. It's this would... is this is just a heuristic, right? We we know it's a fallible rule. We know it's it's going to to not always get it right. It's perfectly okay to say, yeah, in that case, we just didn't get it right. Okay. I think what I proposed was maybe like some later thing if we can't solve I, it correctly understand. or something like that. So. Yeah, okay. yeah, telling telling users they need to modify their freestyle job in order to get benefit from this feature is probably not quite as dramatic as telling them they need to upgrade the plugin, but it's 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 still rather dramatic. Saying oh, in order to use this, you have to upgrade the plugin. Uh, upgrade the plugin that's fine but oh and you have to touch every one of your thousands of freestyle jobs hmm. i understand okay so this is something i have to explore more now and uh, okay after that so i think these are the things i needed to discuss um, I uh, we have three PRs, three open PRs, uh, which um, Fran has reviewed the Git tool chooser and the test extensively. I uh, so I think it's uh, if the other mentors can review it and then we could merge it. So of course I'm going to push the new the change in design, which where we just need one constructor. So I, I am going to make that uh, push that in about after the meeting I'll do it. So um, then I, uh, in terms of Git tool chooser, it's complete. Oh, it, sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> I just forgot the extensions. Uh, it wouldn't be complete. It would work for extensions uh, with only GitHub branch source plugin and with public repositories, not even pub private repositories. That is how it is created right now. So if, if it's important for us, if it's critical for us to first implement it with private repositories as well, then this PR will be blocked till um, we figure out a way how to manage credentials and how to pass them. So that's a decision uh, maintainers and the mentors can make. Uh, then the, the other two PRs we have uh, are related to the unsupported command feature that is uh, checking if the extension is compatible with JGit or not and then recommending a feature uh, and implementation. So. So I need to add test cases for the unsupported command class. I, I haven't, I've interactively tested it, not added the unit test cases. So yes, this is the uh, current status. Any? I have uh, another maybe naive question and uh, <laughs> so forgive, forgive all the questions that may have already come up in PRs. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm behind on the PRs also. Um, but one question I have is uh, for public repositories, if you use API tokens too often, then I think that you get start to get throttled. Um, yes. Will that have a negative effect on us? Um, so they, they, what we're talking about is the API uh, limit, right? The limit. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. We have. So uh, the so the brand source GitHub brand source plugin I explored, they have a function which checks the API rate limit every time. Uh, trying to make a request, so I think we can we can just uh, we can add that function and just we can hope that the request not being so I as far as I know it's for a for an unauthenticated user it is um, 
fifty times in an hour. Or I'm not. I'm yeah. not. I I didn't look. It's at really it low. <laughs> it's it's low. Yeah. So um, that would be a problem. But and I, I. Yes. Yes, Max. Go ahead. I shouldn't interrupt. Continue. No, I I was just saying that I at the time of doing it, I I thought that let me just think about uh, figuring out figuring it out for once. I don't. I, let's. We'll think. So I was thinking that we would uh, at some point of time uh, implement the authentication, and that would remove uh, uh, the rate limits uh, question. So yes, Justin, that's a very valid question, and we cannot do anything about it. It would be a concern if we have a lot of projects which are trying to. Um, actually, it would be a big concern if we have a thousand freestyle job projects which are trying to. Um, but then they would would have to have the same repository URL as well in the same instance. I'm not sure how this would yeah. affect us. So if if a particular, as far as I know, so how would GitHub know that the same particular machines? It would map it with the IP, right? So for a particular machine's IP, that is how it knows that okay, this particular IP is sending more than fifty requests in an hour. And then yeah, I think so. Can't can't we just can't we just rely on the branch source to manage the rate limit? Uh, it seems it seems like the GitHub branch source at least has heroic, and I I do mean heroic. It's got two different choices. I can either choose to use a what is it? I can use a linear barrier, or I can declare that that I don't want to block rate API rate requests, API requests until I'm very near the threshold. And, and so they've got, they've got an awful lot of intelligence already inside the branch source, that branch source. Anyway, I would, I would just rely on them to do it. Now it, it, it's a valid point though. I wonder given, given the, given the, relatively insensitive nature of our request for the size of a repository should we consider a, a cache somewhere globally which a little hash table which remembers we've already asked for the size of this repository don't even bother asking again uh, Rishab is that already happening or every time a repository URL is referenced you ask the question to the to the to the uh, rest API provider um, so every time we ask for it, we, we do not maintain a cache or do not maintain so, any kind so of information. That may be something we might consider just because we know that the the size of the repository is unlikely to decrease and and it's also unlikely to take dramatic increases in sizes in any given 24 hour period, right? And if it does, we made a poor choice that time and we'll get better next time. So, okay. so, so something like a remember, remember, and if we asked in 24 hours, don't bother asking again, is not okay. unreasonable. And it's a way of avoiding, you know, oh, we already asked, we've lived for a long time, we can, we don't have to ask again. That's, that's a great suggestion. I, uh, okay. So uh, a table which maintains uh, the sizes for a 24 hour. Yeah, something, a hash map, right? I mean, it's, it's not. This isn't this isn't a big data structure, right? It's we've got a repository URL and a and a, a value. I think we may have Rishab just lost, lost Rishab. Power. I think we may have yeah. just lost him. Although we can still see his screen. Hmm. Yeah, it looks like it looks like the power went out. Maybe. <laughs> oh man. So uh, I was just navigating through the uh, rate limits, and I found when. Uh, deprecation notice that GitHub will be discontinuing the password authentication from November. Well, so what so, what they're discontinuing is the use of your password as a yep. credential, mm -hmm. but yep. but you shouldn't do that anyway. So it's a good thing. Right. Right. Use so an uh, access token. Yeah, they're completely shifting to the API one. Right. That's, that's it. Hey, Rishab's back. Okay, Rishab. Yeah. I had a power cut. So, okay, so I, I was just saying that that's a great suggestion, Mark, and I I would definitely implement that. So uh, my question is, would we want that in this PR or can we uh, 
have later. another fiat for that. Later, yes, that's you're welcome to go much later. That that is that is optimi optimization after we've learned many more things. Okay. Yeah, and I, I think my concern is just like, I think you would just want to handle like if the GitHub plugin branch source plugin thinks that it's going to hit a rate limit, maybe it should just say like, I'm not going to give you the size or something like that. You know, something simple that would take care of and not make the performance worse. It's kind of like the idea. And maybe you've already considered that and that's already being handled. No, it, I, I just expected that it throws an exception. I will just say that, okay, we can, we cannot give you the size. That's what I have done, but that's, okay. that's a very valid uh, point and I would, so with the- That might already handle it then, to look yeah. At the, the exception would, but yes. Uh, so authentication is what we have to look at. And uh, so the last question I have is, um, so right now we have the Git tool chooser as a PR, but we uh, I haven't in I haven't I haven't put the instantiated the uh, tool chooser all over the Git tool chooser uh, Git plugin wherever we are creating a client. So um, so what I wanted to ask was, would we want different PRs for uh, places where we are instantiating different places where instantiating the tool chooser so that we can um, focus on those areas specifically and not just in one PR we where everywhere we have the instance and maybe we miss some particular edge cases where um, the chooser would break cases or or is that is that okay a, a PR a single PR where we have all the places covered where the get tool chooser could be instantiated for uh, the client I ask ask your question again. I'm sorry, Rishab. Uh, uh, help me focus. It's not. Uh, so the question is that uh, would we need different PRs for different places in the Git plugin where we're going to instantiate Git tool user, or would it be comfortable for us to review it in just one PR? Because for the current PR, it doesn't instantiate the Git tool user anywhere. It's just introducing the class within the plugin and uh, the tests. I have put it one at one place so within the git SCM uh, checkout to create client uh, I haven't added it in the multi branch for multi branch projects or at other places of the plugin. Yeah, Am I so, audible to everyone? Uh, just barely. You're a little garbled. So one PR or multiple PRs, you you get to choose. That I I don't know that I can see one being better than the other. Uh, it, it's we know we know we've got PRs to merge on Git client plugin. We know we've got some to review still and merge on Git plugin, and mm -hmm. it, it may let you work go forward in somewhat independently if you aren't inside those specific PRs, but you get to choose. I, okay. I hope sincerely to review the PRs this weekend. I apologize that I haven't still haven't done my due diligence. It's, it's okay. It's okay. So um, that's it from my side, I think. Um, I'll be looking into authentication, how we're going to support the extensions, credentials, and uh, yes, more discussion on the GitHub channel if, if I'm stuck somewhere. Yes. So. Uh, Thank you, everyone, for coming. Thanks, Rishab. Bye. Thanks. Bye.